Welcome everybody to Unfiltered. Pastor David, it's always great to have you join us. It Thank wouldn't you. be unfiltered if you weren't here. That's right. <laughs> you know, last night in your message, uh, you're teaching out of Romans chapter 8. And, uh, and you had mentioned something about Sunday, your Sunday's message. How Peter is talking about in Acts 240, 2.40, being saved from this perverse generation. Mm -hmm. The context is a little interesting because Peter's given his sermon in Acts chapter 2. He talks about being uh, saved from this pre perverse generation, and then he goes on and talks about them continuing steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. What was Peter's point in that right there when he says being saved from this perverse generation? You know, he was speaking a, uh, a message because on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit had baptized he and the other uh, 119. There were 120 altogether that were uh, in the supper room, and he and they had been baptized by the Holy Spirit. They had poured out from this, uh, this upper room and uh, began to speak with unlearned languages. They began to speak with, with other tongues. And as they did so, the people who heard the sound gathered together, and some began to ask questions, whatever does this mean? And uh, others were mocking, saying, oh, they're simply filled with new wine. And so at that point, uh, the apostle begins to preach what is called the Pentecost Sermon. And in doing so, he begins to share the elements of the gospel and speaks with great conviction with many words um, concerning the fact that um, they with, with unlawful hands have taken and crucified the Messiah. And he pointed to them as being the ones who, who did that, meaning that that Jesus died for the sin of the whole world. They were the ones who encouraged and instigated it. They rejected him and all of that. And then he closes this message by saying to them that they should be saved from this perverse generation. And then Luke says that, and with many other words, he continued to speak. And what happened is uh, that these people who heard the word received it with gladness in other words, it spoke to their heart, they were convicted, and uh, they were saved. And so what is he speaking about? Save yourselves from this perverse generation. The word perverse speaks of that which is crooked or twisted. And he's speaking concerning not a generation per se in terms of like, like uh, my dad's generation or my generation in that way. It was more uh, in reference to the age, the evil age. And he was basically saying that you need to respond to this message to be saved from the judgment that is about to come upon you who have been guilty of the rejection of Messiah. But in saying so, this evil generation is something that stands out, at least to me, and I'll be sharing on Sunday a little bit about it, in that every, ge every generation has certain conspicuous elements related to it. Theirs was one of unbelief. Our generation is also one of unbelief. Every evil generation has an unbelieving spirit concerning the things of, of God and all of that, but it can be manifested in a variety of ways. And, and what we are seeing in our generation isn't really different. It's just different in terms of the day that it's occurring, but there's the same elements. And I'll speak a little bit about that, and that's what we've been speaking about. It's that we're living in a time when evil is called good and good is called evil, and those who would say this is evil are being called evil themselves. So when the church proclaims the message of, of uh, salvation in Christ to be saved from this evil and wicked generation, this perverse age, there are people who, who reject that. Even as Peter had, sim had, had been mocked prior to preaching, he was still amongst the people who had been mocking him because they were speaking amongst themselves when he spoke. It doesn't say in Scripture that they, those who had mocked him walked away and just left a, a group of people interested. There was a mixed group of people who were listening to the things, and it was a huge group because there were no less than 3,000 wow. of them who got saved and were baptized. And so the generation we live in right now is also a perverse age, a perverse generation where where a Supreme Court justice doesn't even know how to define what a woman is. Mm -hmm. When any 12-year-old boy who hasn't been evangelized into perversion or, or a confusion of gender, any 12-year-old boy can say, I'm a boy and that's a girl. Well, today, that is not only frowned upon, but there are 
there are uh, laws that are, attempted, are being attempted to be written into our codes that would make it illegal, actually, because of hate speech and various other things, to be able to declare those things to be not good or to be evil or to be wrong, right? So that is a perverse generation. We're living in a time. We have government that thinks printing money is going to solve our problems. The number one nation that has national debt in the entire world, number one, is the United States. There are, there are different nations like uh, Australia and others that their national debt is like $1.5 trillion. Ours is $32 trillion, John. <laughs> Can and you so that? It, it's beyond being able to be fathomed. And so we're living in a time when we think we can print money and solve our problems, or we can call a boy a girl or a girl a boy and solve our problems, or we can have a drag queen come and read a book in a library, but a Christian can't come in and read a book to the children because you're forcing them to believe a certain ideology. And so, no, we're living in a perverse generation. And uh, it's that kind of age, the age of rejection of Christ, that we today are supposed to continue preaching the gospel in. And then finally, it says that these people who gladly received, with joy received what was being said, mm -hmm. remained steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and, and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. It speaks concerning what, what made the church, the church in the early days. And that's what we'll be looking at this upcoming Sunday. And it's the it, uh, stead, being steadfast in apostles' doctrine is God's word. And uh, yes, the perverse generation. And so that's what I wanted to ask you about because how does that apply today? Well, you just responded, it's everywhere today. Well, we have it today, but the problem is, and I'll close with this, the problem is, is that we have places, places that are referring to themselves as churches that are not preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll say they are because they opened the book and because they quoted a scripture. But then they give, uh, you know, a variety of things that don't pertain to that passage because that's the real interest of that church. And, and, and I will be saying this in the, in the message, and I'll say it, say it this way now. Churches that don't preach the gospel don't have the earmarks of the early church. The earmark of the early church is that they rejoice gladly that the people heard them, saw them, they had great favor with the people. Why? Because they had something amongst them that wasn't anger, that, that wasn't hatred. It was a loving joy that they had because they'd been saved. And the real earmark of a church is when it's filled with people who are joyful because they've been saved. But when you come out of a church service mad, when you come out angry, you know, at all the injustice and angry at, and you say it's righteous indignation, but people don't want to be around you because you're so angry and so self-righteous. That's, that's not a church. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a different thing. We'll look at that. Well, Pastor, thank you so much. And it's a great plug for you guys to come join us on Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45. As you mentioned, we'll be looking, you'll be teaching out of Acts chapter 2, speak, looking specifically at this. And and some of the other things that are mentioned. So I want to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Uh, even looking ahead to next Wednesday, uh, 7 p.m. as you're taking us through the Book of Romans, and we'll be celebrating communion as a church family. So always looking forward to having that uh, join us. Amen. So we look forward to having you on Sunday morning. Pastor David, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, John. Church family, we love you and hope to see you on Sunday.